Hello YouTube, welcome to today's video where I continue my series on the Aerosoft Airbus. Regular viewers will know that this set of videos started with a series of four that followed the step-by-step -step guide from Aerosoft for the Airbus A318 products. Since then, it's grown to include more advanced topics like steep approaches and custom routes. So, if you've arrived at this video and you're keen to learn more about flying airliners in a flight sim world, why not check out some of my earlier videos too? On to today's video, where I'm flying a new route from Bristol, in the southwest of England, to Edinburgh, the capital city of Scotland. I've introduced quite a few changes for today's video. Firstly, I'm using Active Sky Next to inject real weather into the sim. Next up, I'm doing flight planning using PFPX, and I'm going to create the route immediately prior to flying it. If you want more information on how to use PFPX, I've got an earlier video that will help you. Next, I'm using Rex Soft Clouds. It's the add-on of the moment. I think they look great, but check out the video, see what you think. Next up is ATC Chatter. I've enabled the option for comms with the Aerosoft Airbus to give a more realistic audio experience for the flight. Finally, I've added UK 2000 scenery for both Bristol and Edinburgh. So, let's go check it out. Let's fly. OK, so here we are with PFPX loaded. Let's enter in the details of our route. I'm going to make up a flight number, just 123, from AGGD to EGPH. And there are all the details down to the payload. Let's use a random payload. Why not? I'm going to take a quick note of some numbers here, though. I've got a total of 119 passengers and one infant. Baggage and cargo between them add up to 8085. I'm taking a note of these numbers so I can enter them into the MCDU in the Airbus momentarily. Right, so fuel's OK. Let's calculate the route. There's the route. Uh, what I need to remember here is that I'm using the BCN1X SID and the EDN3A star. I'm going to use Glasgow for my alternate, which is Echo Golf Papa Foxtrot, and we'll have PFPX find the route for us as well. OK, that's been done. Let's compute the flight. There's all the details. Let's have a quick look at the details page. I want to see the release fuel here. We're showing 5274 kilograms that we need to load up for this journey. So we finished all the flight planning that we need for our journey. Let's jump into the aircraft. So here we are in our cold and dark Aerosoft Airbus A319. Incidentally, if you're wondering what these rather odd looking shonky characters are doing over here, good question. They look a bit iffy to me. That's part of the UK 2000 Bristol Extreme experience. Uh, they're not the only odd characters we'll see around. Keep your eyes open, see if you can spot any more. OK, let's start our Airbus up. So, watch the overhead. Batteries on. And the external power. Let's fire up the APU and the nav light. And turn on the ADIRS. Good to go. Let's turn on the screens. Set up the checklists. Cockpit preparation checklist. Okay, with well those done, let's go and enter Batteries. in some fuel data. Both on. Electrical power. External power is on. Navigation lights. On. Engine so our master. passenger numbers we have both off. Engine mode selector. Check normal. Landing gear lever. Check. Cargo. Parking we brake. have 8085, so 8.06, I think. 
Check retracted. Thrust lever. Idle. Point. Transponder mode. Zero. Check nine. standby. Sorry, Radio control out. panel. Set on. E can recall. Yeah, Check. Oh, five skid. point two on. seven four. Flight director. So five on. point two Emergency seven. Light. Set. And Set. No smoking signs. Set on. Okay, so that's Off. good. Let's start auto and load fuel. And rather checked. than doing the load instant, which I've done in earlier videos, we'll just set them off here so they start to load. You can see the numbers here increase for the passengers as they come on. And also down here to the fuel as it gets loaded. It's checked. Checked. On. Let's go and enter our flight details now. On. Checked. So we go to the init page. It's checked. Echo Golf Golf Delta. Echo Golf Papa Hotel. I'm doing it this way because I've created a company route. And zero one. And I'll put in all the details of the flight so far for me. Easy one two three for the flight number. Align the IRS. Cost index of thirty. And a cruising flight level of three six zero. Okay, that's a kilo three and over the And that should be good enough for us for that page. Let's go to page two. Entering the block number for the fuel, so we'll enter five point three for this. Okay. And for the performance. So this time for the flaps, following some in-depth investigation uh, that I did on the Aerosoft site, I'm simply going to enter 2, which is the flap setting, and a forward slash, and then nothing. I'm not going to set up anything, anything for the uh, trimmable horizontal eye, or trimmable horizontal stabilizer, or something like that. Um, I'll cover this maybe in a separate video, uh, but for now, I'm just not going to worry about it. That seemed to be the basic advice that was coming from the forums. Okay, with that set, let's go to our flight plan. Although the flight plan details have been entered, the SID and the STAR have not, so let's enter those. So it already knows we're taking off from Bristol on runway 27. That's already been selected. Odd thing here now, if I select 27 again, nothing happens, but I can click the right arrow here to go to the next page. And the SID I want is BCN1X, so that's good. And we can insert that. And now it should come in with all of its constraints, which it does. I'll do the arrival now. Normally we do it in the air, but let's do it now for completeness. Our arrival uh, is at number 24, so we'll select ILS24 and we are using the EDN 3A star so we'll select that one and there's no via that we're going to be using so we'll select no via insert that quick push up because there will be a discontinuity here and I'll clear that discontinuity in a later video uh, we'll do some sort of in-flight planning where we maybe we will change the star uh, and see what effect that, that has upon where we are and what we're doing. But for now, our flight plan seems to be good. That's all ready to go. Let's finish off our cockpit preparation. Need to make sure that the LS is off, which it is. And we're set to arc and a range of 10, which we are. I'm going to set the altitude to 7,000 feet for now, just for the takeoff phase, and push that, and the speed, and the heading so that they're in managed mode, and we are ready to go. How are our passengers doing? So we're still boarding, we've only got 84 of our expected uh, 119 plus one infant, so we need to wait for them to load up. Fuel-wise, we were expecting uh, 5.27 metric tons, we've got 5.26 on board, so that's about right. Uh, the indicator here has stopped flashing to show that the fuel load is complete. So we're just waiting for the passengers now, and then we can close the door and get underway. 
quick adjustment to easy dock here I don't know why um, even though I set some of my um, camera views inside the cockpit and stabilize them when I come back into the aircraft for some reason it's changed by some little degree so uh, I need to adjust them again it's not a big change but um, I guess if you're a perfectionist about how you want to see a view on these things it can be annoying if it keeps changing all the time as well part of my love-hate relationship with easy dock while we're waiting for the passengers to load let's have a quick look outside Okay, so everybody's on board now. We're ready to push back and start up. So, let's go to the relevant page. Close the doors. Captain, the cabin is secure. All passengers are aboard. Before star checklist, Windows and doors. Closed and locked. APU. APU on. APU bleed. Set on. External power. Disconnected and off. Cabin signs. Set on. Thrust levers. Idle. Parking brake. Set on. Bearer reference. Set. One zero zero two. One zero zero two. Check. Beacon lights. Set on. Okay, so we're going to elect to start with pushback this time. So that's key one. So we need to configure. I want to come back uh, about ten meters. I think. And oops. We go. And I want to come uh, something left, 90 degrees. I also have trouble remembering which way I want the uh, the nose or the tail to swing Five, uh, for the direction. I think this is right. Otherwise, I could be going back to the edit. Let's start. Flight deck to ground. Go ahead, sir. Ground. We have ATC clearance for push and start. Please confirm ground equipment and services are clear. Start pushback. Roger, sir. Please release your parking brakes. Parking brakes released. Start and push back. You can start both engines at your discretion, Captain. Okay. Starting engine two. Okay, the nose is turning the right way, so uh, I guessed right this time. The way it seems to work is that when you're looking at the direction of turn, uh, you're looking at which way the tail turns. And if you think of it that way, 
um, then it's quite simple. The trouble is to remember it for the next time. Engine two is stabilized. Start one. Starting number one. Ground cactus eighteen twenty one spot nine. We at uh, Alpha. The background ATC chatter that you can hear there, um, if you listen into parts of it, it's fairly obvious that this is American based and when they're talking about Texas charters there and so forth, we don't tend to get many of those at Bristol in the UK, um, but I find after a while that the whole thing tends to fade into the background and there's certainly that's been my experience when I've done my private pilot's training that the incessant chatter that goes on with ATC just Engine tends to fade stabilized. in the background and you only suddenly wake up when you hear your own call sign being announced by the air traffic controller. Perhaps wake up's the wrong phrase to use. Um, perhaps engage more actively might be a better choice of phrase. And the pushback is complete, Captain. Please set your parking brakes. Parking brakes are set. Okay then, Captain. Tow bar disconnected. You know steering pin is removed. Uh, all clear signal on the right. Uh, have a good run, sir. After start checklist. Engine belt selector. Set. Set off. Set off. Spoilers. Set. Check zero. Set. Flight controls. Full left. Full right, neutral, full up, full down, neutral, rudder, full left, full right, neutral, check, flaps, flaps two, anti ice, off, ECAM status, checked, ECAM door page, Checked. Hand signal. Received. Checklist complete. Okay, let's start rolling. Good motion on the throttle, I think. We don't seem to be going off to a great fast start. The taxi. We should be enough. Put it back to idle now. So we're waiting for 10 knots to come up here before we initiate the taxiing checklist. And our taxi is taxiing short. checklist. No slide. Set on. Brake check. Pedal pressed. Check zero. Check. Auto brakes. Max. Take off data. Reviewed. FCU. Checked. Flight instruments. Checked. Check. TO config. Set. Checklist complete. And, uh, you want to talk to ramp at 30.57. Okay, so... I'm going to hold just here at the big wag lights. And prepare the cockpit for takeoff. Flight attendant seats for takeoff. Before takeoff checklist. Brake temperature. Checked. Brake fans. Off. Engine mode selector. Check normal. Decast. 
T-A-R-A, tilt above. Exterior lights. Set on. Sliding tables. Stowed. Stowed. Check is complete. I'm sorry, PD-14 seconds. We're on station. Okay, very good. Okay, so let's go and line up on the runway. Now I must admit I have no end of trouble trying to keep the aircraft straight when I do a takeoff. I'm just checking the approach here to make sure there's nothing coming into land. That all looks clear. That's good. Um, and I'm going to put the blame firmly on the fact that uh, although I've got an excellent pair of rudder pedals, the resistance on them is, is really quite strong. Um, and as I'm using a, a really nice Herman Miller chair with roller wheels on a nice flat carpet protector uh, from IKEA, check all that product placement there. Um, whenever I press on the rudder pedals, my seat just shoots backward, and there's a negligible effect on the rudder altogether. Um, it's, it's bad enough sometimes that I think of enabling the uh, the twist uh, on my joystick to to allow me to control the rudder that way rather than uh, this sort of comedy effect of me shooting across the floor um, because I'm trying to press the rudder pedals and all it's doing is sending my uh, chair scooting backwards. Uh, perhaps I ought to film that sometime and make uh, the, the takeoff slightly more interesting. There we are, problems not faced by real world pilots. Okay, let's see how we do for the takeoff roll this time. See if I can't keep it closer to the center line. Take off. Man, Toga, SRS, and runway. A bit to the right of the center line already. Bit of left rudder pedal. Clank is back on the center. A bit late. Positive climb. Gear up. Gear up. Navigation. Check. Climb out at 15 degrees. Seems about right. Waiting for the throttle reduction altitude now of about 2,200 feet. Flaps one. Flaps zero. Climb thrust. Autopilot on. And the after takeoff checklist. Engine mode selector. Check normal. Spoilers. Disarmed. Flaps. Check retracted. Landing gear. Gear up. Lights off. Exterior lights. Set off. Tax. Both on. Anti ice. Off. T cast. Checked. Multimeter. One zero zero two. One zero zero two. Check. Check is complete. So there we go, the rush of the uh, lift off, uh, lift off, the uh, rush of takeoff completed. Ahead of us is the uh, Bristol Channel, as we're heading out over Western Supermare, uh, before taking a right-hand turn to go over the Bristol Channel, heading up towards South Wales, flying over Cardiff, heading up towards Brecon and the Brecon Beacons, before heading northwards towards Liverpool general area then up past Cumbria and uh, hang a left and then a quick right to come towards Edinburgh. You can see the effect of the uh, the soft clouds here now, uh, the volumetric effect that they're trying to achieve and I think they've done it extraordinarily well. The clouds do, I think, look far more realistic. Of the options available I've just used the standard pack one from the available clouds uh, I'll cycle through some of the others in other videos just to see how they uh, how they come out and, and what they look like. Most of the routes I fly in the UK are with um, the smaller Dash 8 Q400 turboprop aircraft, um, which are great uh, airplanes, but tend to travel at much lower altitudes, of course, than the the jets do. Uh, that means that they get to suffer from the vagaries of British weather more often perhaps than the jets do. They may be cruising at around 20,000 
the jets, um, certainly on this particular flight, will go up to uh, 35, 36,000 feet, where the air appears to be a bit smoother. <laughs> I don't know if you're noticing, but uh, in the clouds uh, ahead of us here, there you are now, there are some lightning, or there is some lightning activity. Um, I don't know if it's something about Active Sky Next or my configuration of it, but it seems almost every day when I'm doing a flight in it, there is a lightning, uh, uh, <laughs> I was going to say attack, there, there is lightning going on somewhere in the vicinity. It's almost as if the developers have got very excited about the lightning effect that they've been able to create, and damn if they're not going to use it so that you can marvel at the ingenuity of what they have created. The unfortunate side effect of that, of course, is that if you do this, you'll think that anywhere you fly in the UK, there's permanent thunderstorms going on. But actually, they're very rare here in the UK. So, as I say, I don't know if that's an Active Sky Next thing or if it's my configuration. Uh, it's just another one of those things that I'll need to check out to try to help make the hobby more realistic. I'd also notice that there's a strange coloration effect going on in the land mass ahead of us here. There's almost like a line going down there. But the land to the left is a lighter colour and the land to the right is a darker colour. Uh, now I think this is to do with the fact that I have the Orbex FTX EU England scenery installed. And what you're seeing here is the dividing line between the scenery for England and the scenery that's provided for Wales over here to the left. Okay, let's enter in our uh, approach. 
information on the performance page as we're coming up to our descent performance and approach. So the QNH at Edinburgh is 0994. Okay. Um, 0994. Temperature at the moment is 1 degree. And the winds are 25040. Transition altitude 5000 feet. Bow and radio, I'll uh, leave as the default. So that's ready to go. I'm not going to activate it. In fact, I'm going to leave it to be activated automatically. I will dial in the altitude we will want to come down to on the start of descent, which is 3000 feet. Hello, Captain. Would you like some coffee? Enjoy. Descent preparation checklist. On. At the ice. Off. Received. Altimeter. Standard. Error radio. Set. Initiating descent. Radar tilt. Okay, so here we are now starting our approach into Edinburgh. We're coming on to the EDN 3A star, which comes from the ESKDO waypoint via the TARTN waypoint and then across to the final approach fix or the final approach point for Edinburgh before winging away to the east and flying a nice arc to come back towards the runway and land. Very nice effect with the Volumetric cloud checklist that we're just passing through. Beacon status. Checked. Sliding tables. Stowed. Stowed. Cabin signs. Checked. Accuracy. Checked. Error reference. Standard. Flight attendants, prepare for landing. I just realised that I hadn't turned up the brightness of the uh, the ND section of the monitor. Arrow reference set when I set up the cockpit originally, and that's why we couldn't see the uh, terrain on the navigation display. So ahead of us here on the left is Edinburgh Airport, and then away in the distance there is the uh, Fourth Road Bridge, I believe. This red coloured thing in the distance. I'm not going to activate the approach phase manually either, I'm going to let the uh, fly computers do all that. In fact, it seems to have activated now because we've got the Wall speed shown on the PFD. Let's have a quick look at the captain's MCDU. And yep, sure enough, the approach phase has been activated. Flaps one. Speed check, flaps one. So, what we're going to do now is fly this outbound course. 
And as we come around the arc at the top, we'll be watching closely for the localizer to come alive. Uh, there's actually a pretty small gap when it does come alive before the glide slope starts to fall away. So we've got to be on the ball at that stage. Uh, one of the commenters in one of my earlier video videos uh, pointed out that if you haven't captured the localizer and the glide slope is falling away too fast, uh, you won't be able to capture the glide slope. Uh, it won't descend down far enough to be able to get it. What the parameters are, I don't know. But what I do know is it's best to capture that localizer first um, and then to intercept the glide slope. I have seen a different approach into um, Edinburgh for the runway we're landing at now. It requires coming from the ESKDO um, waypoint and then sort of coming a bit further northward before starting a slow arc away to the right hand side and then doing a straight in approach into the runway. Um, I'm going to save that for a later video because it looks like a really decent approach and looks as if it will be more efficient in terms of flight time and fuel than the one we're flying now. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how that goes. So let's get ready for activating the localizer. As you can see, that glide slope is coming perilously close. Well, we are perilously close to intercepting the glide slope, but the localizer is now alive. Localizer alive. Localizer captured. Okay, you're good. Although the localizer is shooting away uh, as, as if we haven't turned around quite well enough to intercept it. And looking at the navigation display, we are indeed well to the left of the preferred route. Okay, so we're well to the left of the localizer, but we have captured it, and um, we're told that the glide slope has been captured. Will we descend, though, is, is the interesting question, given we're so far off the localizer. Um, the answer at the moment seems to be not so much. Although, yes, yeah, we are. We're starting to descend now. Interesting, I've flown this route a few times already and I've not had quite the same experience that we're seeing now with intercepting the localizer and the glide slope. This one is a bit more pronounced and uh, out of the out of the normal boundaries, I think, if that's a realistic phrase to use here. But it seems to have captured it quite successfully now. We're, we're pretty much centred up on the glide slope and uh, we seem to be centering up on the localizer as well. Flaps 2. Speed check, flaps 2. Gear down. Gear down. So everything going well. Uh, we're certainly well set now on the glide slope and the localizer. Flaps 3. Comes the fun of us trying to land. Flaps 3. And uh, with me uh, trying to use my Buddha pedal to, uh, to positive effect. And bearing in mind that we do have uh, a bit of a crosswind here, according to checklist. EFB, I've got a 25 knot headwind and a 3 knot crosswind from the right. That's not too bad. Checked and armed. Medium. Exterior lights. On. Go around altitude. Checked. Landing memo. Checked, no blue. Checklist complete. Is that ever-present uh, lightning? I'm hoping that that is just an effect that I can turn off or reduce hugely inside active sky. Because at the moment with the flight that we have done here, 
you'd be forgiven for thinking that the UK is just a lightning farm, um, and of course it isn't. Lots of overcast cloud? Certainly. Lots of thunderstorms? Not so much. Need to go to Florida for that one, I think. One thousand. Hundred above. Two hundred minimum. Autopilot off. Three hundred. Two hundred. Three hundred. Continue. Well, looking happy here as well. As you can just see over there to the left. One hundred. The bright lights we get in FSX. Seventy. Sixty. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. 20, retard, 10, 5. Ground spoilers. Yes, that was an acceptable landing. I liked that. don't like the fact that I'm peeling away from the center line already, though. Gripping the edge of my desk to try and keep me in a sensible position. Unfortunately, it's quite a long distance to the next turn off taxiway, according to my electronic flight bag. So keep the speed up just a little bit. One thousand two hundred meter nine hundred meters remaining. Just a bit earlier than the EFB indicated. I think that's a feature of me having um, installed the Edinburgh Extreme. After landing checklist. Exterior lights. Checked. Ground spoilers. Set off. Engine mode selector. Check normal. Flaps. Check retracted. TCAS. Checked standby. Brake temperature. Checked. APU. On. Checklist complete. Oops. No, I really do need to improve my rotor pedal control and or use a different seat and or get rid of the floor protector and or stop <laughs> trying to fly on a slippery floor surface. Fire, uh, fire crew training aircraft over here on the right. Parking ramps just to our right ahead. Parking between the the A and E jet aircraft that are parked there. Right, 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 right
So 10 miles an hour, I'm told, is the advised speed for making turns. Also remember that actually the nose wheel that turns is positioned some distance behind us here on the flight deck. And let's go into park at six. Hold it there. Actually, he's got a safe dock thing. I don't know if that works. Let's uh, try it. We'll go a bit further forward. Mm, a bit leery about getting too further forward before I crash into the building. I think we'll hold it there. I'm convinced that that safe dock system works. Okay, so that's it. We're here on the ground. Let's turn the engines off. And there we go, arrived and in the Edinburgh. Checklist. So, as ever, uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope this has been um, perhaps fun, perhaps useful. Any comments on any part of the flight, uh, I welcome hearing from you. Please leave me a comment below. So, until next time, I look forward to virtually meeting you again. And thanks for watching. Set off. Exterior lights. Set off. Empty eyes.